Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a third episode of our series Shining Stars in which we talk about the companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. Today we will talk about Hadrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu an who was one of the great companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. Hadrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an belonged to the tribe of Banu Umayyah and Banu Umayyah was the most influential and a very rich tribe of Mecca. And Hadrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an himself was a very successful trader and Allah gave him lots of riches. And Hadrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was a very nice personality even before Islam. Hadrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an never did idol worshipping. He never did gambling or drinking or all those kinds of evil activities which were very common in Mecca. Hadrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an remained away from all of them. Naturally, he was an extremely modest person. Once he was coming back from a trade journey back to Mecca, he said, I dreamt that someone was announcing that the last messenger of Allah has arrived in the land of Arabia. So he was very excited when he had this dream and when he came to Mecca, he discussed his dream with his friend Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an informed him that your dream is true and in your absence Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has announced his prophethood. But it was a very early time and the things were very secret. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an took Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an towards the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and then he accepted Islam. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an had an important role in the conversion of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an as well. And when Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an accepted Islam, he was tortured by his uncle Hakam. The problem was that Banu Umayyah and Banu Hashim were the rival tribes and no one was accepting Islam from Banu Umayyah tribe and Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was the first person who accepted Islam and opened the gate of Islam for his tribe. And that's why his uncle, his guardian Hakam subjected him to severest tortures. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was locked in a room and he was not given any food or any drink until Hazrat Usman fainted. There was only one demand from Hazrat Usman to leave Islam, but he remained firm. And sometimes Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was rolled in a mat or in a carpet and fire was lit around him to suffocate him, but Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an remained firm and never renounced his faiths. After that, Holy Prophet peace be upon him gave Hazrat Ruqayya his daughter in the marriage of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and they were known as the best couple in Mecca because Hazrat Usman and Hazrat Ruqayya both had very good personality and they also had the honor to migrate in the way of Allah in the first batch which left uh, for Abyssinia in which there were 12 men and 4 women Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and Hazrat Ruqayya were also there and Holy Prophet peace be upon him said that it is the first couple to migrate in the way of Allah after Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Lut alayhi salam Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Lut alayhi salam migrated from Iraq to Syria with their wives and after that it is the first couple migrating in the way of Allah for the sake of their faith and for their Iman. It was a great honor for both of them. They came back from Abyssinia and when the time came to migrate to Medina, so they also got the honor to migrate again in the way of Allah. And in Medina, Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an did a great job by buying a well for Muslims. There was a well, only one well of sweet water. It was known as Bi'ir Ruma, the well of Ruma. And that was the property of a Jew and he used to sell the uh, water at a very high price. And Muslims did not have that much amount of money. They migrated and they were penniless people. So Muslims were in a great trouble. So Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an paid 20,000 dirhams to, and bought the well for Muslims. He came to the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and informed him that Ya Rasulullah the problem has been solved and I have bought the well and Muslims will get water from it free of cost. So Holy Prophet peace be upon him was so delighted, he was so happy that he said to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an that Usman you did not buy a well but you have bought Jannah. Holy Prophet peace be upon him gave him the tidings of paradise here. 
Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and participated in all battles in Medina except for the battle of Badr because his wife Hazrat Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha was in a very critical condition she was not well and Holy Prophet peace be upon him himself asked Hazrat Usman to stay with his wife and take care of Hazrat Ruqayya but Hazrat Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha died when the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was still in Badr and when Holy Prophet peace be upon him came back from Badr, Holy Prophet peace be upon him gave the share of the spoils also to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and Holy Prophet counted him amongst the companions of Badr because Hazrat Usman was ready to go and participate in this great battle but only because of the Prophet's command Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala stayed back in Medina. And when Holy Prophet peace be upon him saw that Hazrat Usman was very upset, was very sad after the death of Hazrat Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Holy Prophet peace be upon him gave his other daughter Umm Kulsum in the marriage of Hazrat Usman and since then Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anha was called Zulnuran, possessor of two lights. It was a great honor for Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala to become the son-in-law of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him twice. None of the other companion got that honor. And why Holy Prophet peace be upon him liked him so much that when Hazrat Umm Kulsum also died in 9 AH, Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, if I had any other daughter, I would have given her in the marriage of Usman. The Holy Prophet peace be upon him liked him so much because of Hazrat Usman's modesty. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala was a most modest person in this ummah. Once Holy Prophet peace be upon him was sitting casually in his house and his scarf was uncovered and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala came, the Prophet did not move his position. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala came, the Holy Prophet peace be upon him continued sitting in the same way. But when he got to know that Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala was coming, Holy Prophet peace be upon him sat properly, covered his body properly and corrected everything and then he allowed Hazrat Usman to enter. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha used to notice everything. So she asked Holy Prophet peace be upon him, Ya Rasulullah, why for Hazrat Usman? You did not change your position when Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar came, but when you heard the name of Hazrat Usman, you sat properly and you covered your body properly. So Holy Prophet peace be upon him said to Hazrat Aisha, shouldn't I feel shy before a man before whom even angels feel shy? Even the angels appear with modesty in front of Usman. So just imagine the level of the modesty of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and no one can attain that high level of modesty which Allah gave to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and, and because of that Holy Prophet peace be upon him loved him a lot. And modesty is that quality which is known as the morality of this religion. The Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, every religion has a morality and the morality of Islam is modesty and Usman was the best in it. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and played a very very significant role at the time of the Treaty of Udaybiyah. Holy Prophet peace be upon him first sent one of his companion to inform Makkans that he was just coming to perform Umrah. His name was Kharash bin Umayyah but the Quraysh attempted to kill him. He came back saving his life and the Quraysh killed his camel. Then Holy Prophet peace be upon him wanted to send some influential person. So Holy Prophet peace be upon him had in his mind uh, the name of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala but Hazrat Umar suggested that Ya Rasulullah, I am not good for this uh, dialogue because you know the negotiation has to be done by a person who is calm and cool minded and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala was known to be short tempered. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala suggested that Ya Rasulullah, Usman will be the best person for it because Usman was totally different in nature. He was very calm person, he was very cool minded person and besides that he was very intelligent, very knowledgeable and Hazrat Usman belonged to the tribe of Banu Maya and uh, the chief of Makkah Abu Sufyan was also his cousin. So Hazrat Umar said that Usman will be the best person for it. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and went to Makkah but he took his time and he did not return back to Muslim camps and the rumor is spread that Usman had been killed. It was just a rumor 
but holy prophet peace be upon him uh, also came in the influence of it because the prophets know what Allah informs them holy prophet peace be upon him on this he uh, we come to know about the policy of the holy prophet peace be upon him at this occasion his policy regarding the killing of his messenger was very strict and holy prophet peace be upon him never accepted any injustice holy prophet peace be upon him said that uh, we will not leave this place until we take the revenge of Hazrat Usman's murder. And he asked his Sahaba to come and do pledge on death. That is known as Bayt Rizwan and that is mentioned in Surah Fatah in which Allah said, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ إِذْ يُبَيِّعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Indeed, Allah is pleased with those who took pledge on your hand under the tree. So the pledge was done on the thing that we will take the revenge of Hazrat Usman and we will fight till the last drop of our blood and we will not leave this place. And when Quraysh got to know about this pledge, they sent a person, Suhail bin Amr, and then Treaty of Dabiya was signed. So in this event, Hazrat Usman's role was very significant. And when the pledge was taken, Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, This is my hand and this is the hand of Usman and I take pledge on the behalf of Usman in it. So Holy Prophet peace be upon him called his hand Hazrat Usman's hand and Holy Prophet peace be upon him took pledge on the behalf of Hazrat Usman. It was something very great for Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and and the companions over there were saying to Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that Ya Rasulullah, Usman is in Mecca, he will perform Umrah very easily. But Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said confidently that Usman will never perform Umrah, he will never perform Tawaf until I perform Tawaf. And the same thing happened. Makkahs were saying, his cousins were saying in Makkah that Usman, you are here, you can perform Umrah. But Hazrat Usman refused to do that. And he said, how can it be that my messenger is there in Hudaybiyah and you don't allow him to come and perform Tawaf? So how can Usman perform Tawaf without him? And Hazrat Usman came back without performing Umrah. That was his obedience and his love for Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Hazrat Usman was known for his generosity. Allah made him very rich and Allah also gave him a lot of generosity. And he set great examples of generosity in the history of Islam at the time of the Tabuk expedition when Holy Prophet peace be upon him for the first time he asked for donations and the companions had the great examples of donation. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and donated 1,000 dinars. Dinars are the gold coins. He brought 1,000 dinars and he placed them in front of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. And the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was so happy when he saw the huge amount of donation. And the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was said to be playing with the coins. And the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was smiling. He was turning over the dinars and he was saying, Usman, nothing can stop you from going to Jannah. It was the second time when Holy Prophet peace be upon him gave him the tidings of paradise. And besides 1,000 dinars, Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and donated 200 camels. According to some reports, he gave more than that. But at least he donated 200 camels and they were laden with dates and the eatables for the army. It is said that the entire donation, two-thirds of the entire donation was the uh, collective donation of all people of Medina and the one-third of the entire donation was given only by Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and because of that Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, is also known as Ghani, the generous person. And it is also reported that once Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, came to Holy Prophet peace be upon him and said, Ya Rasulullah, please pray for me. Allah should stop giving wealth to me because I cannot handle so much wealth. So Jibreel came to Holy Prophet peace be upon him and said, Ya Rasulullah, tell Usman that Allah is saying that Usman should stop spending his money in the way of Allah, only then Allah will stop giving money. Whenever there is any need of some donation, Usman's donation is bigger than any other donation 
and Allah has promised in the Holy Quran multiple times that whatever you will spend in the way of Allah, Allah will return it back to you multiplied. So when the donations of Hazrat Usman are coming back to him multiplied and he is unable to handle that money. So this is the problem of Usman. This is not the problem of Allah. Allah will fulfill his promise. So that was the relation of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and with God. That was the business Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and used to do with God. That whatever he spent in the way of Allah generously, wholeheartedly, Allah returned him back to him multiplied. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and also donated his entire caravan once during the caliphate of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and when there was famine and the people were uh, having nothing to eat. It was a time for him to earn money. The businessmen, the traders, they wait for such an occasion in which they can multiply their money and they sell the items at high prices. But at that time, Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and did not earn this way. But Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and donated all the edibles among the people of Makkah free of cost. So obviously Allah will not give the wealth to such a great person so whoever deserves to be wealthy. Hazrat Usman was not only a wealthy person but besides that Hazrat Usman an, was the most senior scribe of the divine revelation. The first person who wrote the Holy Quran with his hand was Hazrat Usman an. and Hazrat Usman an, himself said that I don't remember even a single day in my life in which I did not recite the Holy Quran or I did not contemplate on it. Not even a single day of his life. The Muslims should look towards their condition today that they sometimes don't even remember that when did they recite the Holy Quran last time. And the companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him don't remember even a single day of their lives in which they did not recite the Holy Quran. It tells us what is the difference between us and the companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. And this difference in the relationship with the Holy Quran makes a difference in our lives today. Why they were so successful and why we are so unsuccessful, the reason is very clear that is the relation with the Holy Quran. The wife of Hazrat Usman said that when he starts offering his Sahajjud prayer, sometimes he recites the entire Quran in a single rakah. Hazrat Usman had a lot of love of the Holy Quran and he also narrated the hadith from the Holy Prophet peace be upon him The best amongst you is when who learns the Holy Quran and teaches it to others. So Hazrat Usman is a great model, is really a shining star for all the Muslims today. We should follow Hazrat Usman in the matters of generosity in the way of Allah and regarding the relationship with the Holy Quran. May Allah guide us to follow the footsteps of the companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him.